you need consistency in the in the beginning for data. So you're saying it's it's very similar to going to the gym. You can't just go to the go to the gym for two weeks or. Two <laughs> I'm weeks. saying there's no shortcut. It's yeah. So awesome. I'll give you a very specific brand strategy, and this is just what I've seen work. Hello, everyone. What we're going to be doing today for about the next. 20 to 30 minutes is just answering some business questions. If you have an online business or personal branding or LinkedIn specific questions, Elijah, what's up? I have been doing marketing and online social media probably since 2015. Okay. I actually recently took an additional marketing position. I've sort of been building my career in marketing. I've been educating myself, studying business and all this stuff and realized that the money is really in marketing and branding and sales and having a brand that draws hot leads rather than trying to chase right. people. So you're talking to the right person because I'm an inbound strategist. So, I mean, the first part is really just putting yourself out there. I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of knowledge. So have you done any videos just sharing some of your experiences and information that you know? I've been doing, I've been literally doing exactly that since 2000. Probably, I started with Facebook, but Facebook kicked me off because I'm very vocal and direct, and um, they it, they seem to truncate their upper upper echelon twenty percent and lower. Have you tried that on LinkedIn? I posted a lot of just text posts, and you know, just basically doing research and my own my own research and my own findings and just doing basically just art, simple articles. Some of them were pretty extensive and long articles. Okay. Um, just basically on the conclusions and, and the stuff that I've been researching and studying. You know, I've been building my social media, but it's, it's I haven't had a, a, a very specific brand strategy. It's yeah, kind of so awesome. I'll give you a very specific brand strategy. And this is just what I've seen work for multiple people in your position. So. Articles are not videos. Video is going to be um, extremely important because I don't know if you wrote the article. I don't know if an AI wrote it. I don't know if you're a real person. I don't know what to expect on a consultation if I never see you on video. That's number one. So right. the first month, I would just post one video a day sharing a marketing tip or just something or answering a question from one of your top clients. The easiest way to go about this is to audit questions that your top clients have asked you over the years, and then just one question per video. That's the first 30 days. The second 30 days, I'd continue to do that, but then add in LinkedIn newsletters on a weekly basis. The third 30 days, building on top of LinkedIn newsletters and video, I would add a weekly LinkedIn live video event where you start to answer questions and prove you're an expert by answering those questions live. And then after the 90 days, you basically just review the analytics on a monthly basis, obviously, and double down each month on what's working best. And it would be almost impossible for you not to get some inbound traction with that 90 day strategy. Right. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Like the video that I've been doing, I, you know, Facebook kicked me off. I had issues with my YouTube. Or my phone wouldn't access my YouTube. I was I was having issues with LinkedIn, where it just it didn't seem like it was drawing a lot of a lot of leads or anything like that. And I found that I had the most success and it was the easiest way to post what I was doing in one button on on Instagram. So that's what I that's where I focused most of my energy time and everything that I've done since I got kicked off of Facebook has been all on my Instagram 100%. Again, I don't know what you've done on LinkedIn, but it's easy to say, "Oh, it didn't work on LinkedIn." Well, did you do it consistently for 90 days? Probably not. You know, it's easy to say things don't work, but the effort has to be there to prove it doesn't work. Now, if you do all those things for 90 days and you don't get it a reach out or just nothing is happening whatsoever, then I'd say, "Yeah, okay, well, Maybe that's not the platform for you double down on Instagram. So right. if you're going to try multiple platforms, you have to really remove the bias and put in equal effort on all platforms. But it, it really, in the beginning, the consistency is not just for you to improve the skills. It's for data. If over 90 days you do four posts and then you come to someone like me and you're like, well, it didn't work. I'm not even going to consider those four posts. It's, it's almost as if you like nothing happened. If you come to me with 90 
pieces of data, that's different. Then we can build on something. So it's really just understanding that you need consistency in the in the beginning for data. So you're saying it's it's very similar to going to the gym. You can't just go to the go to the gym for two weeks or <laughs> I'm saying weeks. there's no shortcut. Like it is what it is, right? So it's just like going to the gym. You know, somebody that's that's uh, squatting whatever big weight for I don't know what what's like a big weight for guys like two fifty uh, like squatting. I would say no, most guys most guys are probably not twenty five. Okay, so like in a year or two. Exactly. Like so you walk into a gym and someone's squatting 225. They didn't they didn't do that in a month or they didn't do that in a week. Like they've just been doing it consistently. They've learned strategy, they've built on a bunch of things for years. And so it's the same thing. And that it's also why consistency is so important in the beginning, because you're basically cutting your learning curve time shorter. And there's so many skill sets that are built upon it. Like for for example, now I'm doing 15 minute YouTube tutorials. I would have never been able to do that had I not been consistent with short video for years, just because it's a different beast and a different skill set. So I hope that answered your question. Absolutely. Bernadine. Hello. So I've been on a journey of self-transformation and um, I really want to inspire other women and help them to also transform their bodies and find their purpose in life and move forward into a happy life. So my five-year plan is to become a life coach, but also maybe a health coach. I'm not sure yet, but I would like to know how can I start molding my online presence to my five-year goal plan? So that people can already know what to expect from me in the future. I mean, in your case, I would just start sharing how you're becoming the person that they will probably admire. You know, if I naturally show up and share the journey of how I went from whatever to spending one hour a day in nature, having no technology on the weekend, getting into the best shape of my life, that's naturally going to gravitate and attract other people that are on the path to do the same. So. The real answer to your question is just becoming the person that you want to be and your audience will want to become. And if you do that in front of them, it's even more powerful because then they can remember your transformation. So I would share the good, the bad, the ugly, but I would do it consistently. And as long as they see you progressing towards your goal and changing, they know that you're real. You're not just talking about it. You're not just preaching health and then going to eat Twinkies. And uh, it is what it is. So the real answer to your question is just becoming the person that they would uh, really aspire to be and sharing it. They totally does. I'm speechless. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much. You're welcome. I don't know if Shankar, you want to add anything to that? No, I mean, it comes back to what you said earlier. What was also true for Elijah is about uh, finding consistency in your voice in something that you create for yourself and for your future clients, and then also uh, choosing a platform that matches your personality. And obviously, we are all here on LinkedIn in this uh, audio room for a reason. So maybe LinkedIn is a good platform. All right, Samuel. All right, thank you very much. Uh, First of all, I just want to say really quickly, I love uh, the clarity in which you speak, uh, very short and precise. I'll try and do the same. So my question really is, I'm traveling more for my business right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to find a way to authentically build connections. Uh, I know probably the answer is to do it online. But for example, I'm traveling uh, for my place of residence right now. I'm traveling to a new country Mm -hmm. and I'll be pitching different business ideas. So my question really is, how do I maintain the cultural context when Mm -hmm. pitching just to make sure you know i don't sound maybe too pushy oh yeah that's a great question so number one i'd leverage linkedin and try to connect with people more in advance right like so for example if i was gonna fly to japan and try to close a deal there i'm gonna leverage my network and see who has done deals in japan because there's different cultural things so do you know anyone where are you going and do you know anyone in that area that's done deals yes so actually i do know someone so i'm going to dubai okay. next month, and my sister lives there so i do know someone yeah 
Okay. And I don't know if your sister's closing deals or not, but I would honestly maybe just put out a video or search certain, like in, in the business that you're doing. Like, let's say if I wanted to connect with somebody that's in the coaching business in Dubai, remember like LinkedIn's a search engine. So I could put like coach and then I could put Dubai and I could look at like the top coaches there. And I could reach out to them and just say, hey, I have a question. What should I know? And, you know, you may have to pay them for some advice. But usually when you reach out, people are fine to give some advice. But it's imperative because one little thing could cause you to completely miss out on a deal. Just something that you wouldn't even know. Right. And just to follow up for you. So early on, maybe in your career when uh, you were traveling, how do you make a decision as to... This is the city. Uh, so I'll, I live in Toronto right now in Canada. Right? Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of different opportunities in the States. Just, you know, proximity. Uh, New York, for example, uh, you'd always find business there. But how do I center myself other than, you know, personal decision and say, this is where I'm setting up my business. And because right now it's easy to work from, you know, work from the beach as every, everyone's trying to do right now. But how do I make some of those decisions? Uh, do you have any insight on that? Are you asking like, where do you personally set up or where do you go for deals? And I guess, tell me a little bit about what you do so I could understand why you need to travel to close deals. So I work in marketing. Yeah. My background is in a software development, but I've transitioned into marketing since just about 2017. Okay. So right now, uh, for example, in, in Dubai, uh, I'm going to uh, chase the deal in the tea business. So okay. that required me to, uh, I have some contacts there. I, I made some, uh, you know, connections beforehand, as you'd said. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to expand. So I have one business that I'm chasing there and I'm trying to expand beyond that. Yeah. Is, is that what you enjoy getting deals internationally and stuff? Do you like that? Yes. So <laughs> what do you mean? You uh, guess so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess uh, just hearing myself speak out loud is giving me, or, uh, you know, hearing you ask the questions is giving me insight about what I want to do. So I definitely enjoy traveling, but okay. the decision I guess I'm trying to make right now is do I set shift, uh, do I set stall here? And because I feel maybe I feel I've achieved what I needed to achieve here. So because just the technology right now is so good such that you could travel, I just want to make that decision just for the sake of, oh, I enjoy making international deals. So I was asking in terms of your early on experience, yeah, um, how do you make some of those decisions from a personal level, but also in terms of business. In the beginning, you have less leverage, right? Because you have less leverage, you need to go to where people are more often. So I would do it based on the opportunity that was at stake. And the bigger the stake, obviously, the more likely that I was going to travel. I hope that answers the question. Does that kind of answer the question? Yes, it does. And thank you so much. Uh, okay. I'll pass it on to someone else. No. no. And, and then for the second part of your question, it's really a personal decision. So for me, I don't like to travel for deals. And I like to stay hyper-focused, especially during us building and doubling, tripling, whatever the business. I like to stay focused. And for me, travel is energy leakage. Uh, you know, it, yeah. it messes with my focus. It messes with that. So I made the personal decision to not travel. My business partner is on stage and I want him to answer your question too, because he travels more. <laughs> so, laughing, yeah. right. So, but that's a personal decision for me. Like I know where I thrive. So if you find that you're more fulfilled when you travel, you love to experience these new cultures, one of the things that I would advise you to do is just like share your travels more. It's going to attract more international businessmen that also travel nonstop and, and things like that, because it's just going to attract them. But let's say you hate it for some reason, just want to stay more local and you want to uh, just be in New York because you love New York, then I would start making almost like a transition like hey within the next 12 months i'm gonna stop all international travel and maybe for six months it's gonna cut into your revenue but you almost have to prepare what can you do to hedge that difference right and maybe what you do is you start building a personal brand so that you have to rely less on outbound and going places and positioning yourself to where they have to come to you wow thank you so much i really appreciate it yeah good question i tend to look as so often in business, I tend to look at signals 
uh, what are cities, what are countries that just for whatever reason in the uh, business aspect keep popping up? What are names you keep hearing? So for me, for example, it is interestingly enough is Bali because a lot of content creators seem to choose Bali as a way to just relax. Uh, I hear Dubai a lot because obviously great deals are made in Dubai. And one city that keeps popping up for me uh, over and over is also Amsterdam because of its strong uh, location and talent. So what I do then is, for example, in uh, next month, I will spend uh, an entire month in Amsterdam. And what I do at that time is I use this wonderful platform LinkedIn to do some research. And if you think about it, um, when you create content and you have someone from a different continent post or comment on your content, that is very flattering, right? So I focus on building up a, re a virtual relationship with someone I want to meet before I go there. And I achieve that by just being very interesting in how I comment and the questions I ask. The other thing I do is I go to my network, people I like to do business with, and I ask them, hey, I'm going to spend a month in Amsterdam. Do you have anyone you think I should meet? And if you do that with enough people that you respect, um, you will obviously get great connection. By the way, if anyone here in the room is in Amsterdam, hit me up. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that is really, really wonderful. Uh, I took notes for sure. And I specifically am interested in when, when you said, for example, content creators, and there's mm -hmm. always items popping up in a certain place, and you can buy on them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is wonderful for me as, as somebody who works in marketing, because does that mean then I'll, you know, also join in the crowd? Or do I now, you know, pick my own niche where people maybe are not looking at maybe let me go to Nairobi in Kenya, where maybe there's less uh, traffic, but I know certain content creators from there are maybe underlooked. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And also in Toronto, most likely a lot of your network don't know much about the market in Nairobi, you know, but because of your affinity to it, to that place you do. So it's definitely, it makes sense. And if that somehow keeps popping up, I mean, we all know that in Africa, a lot of the business opportunities for the next decade will, will definitely predominantly grow there. So might as well have a presence there early enough. Oh, uh, thank you once again. I feel like I've hogged uh, the stage a little bit. So uh, I mean, hey, you, else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anyone else raising their head. So yeah, thanks, Samuel. I think at the end of the day, the last thing that you want to do is get into a business that you feel caged in. And I see this a lot. People will make business decisions just based on the money opportunity that's right in front of them. And then they get trapped in something that they hate. And that is dangerous territory. I would not advise that. I'd really try to practice some self-awareness and some courage because maybe what you want is completely different than what you have now and there's going to be changes and people are going to judge you whatever but really be hyper self-aware of what fulfills you because if it's going to be a treacherous thing for you to get up and work in your business every day you're going to lose against the person that wakes up in their business every day has that self-awareness and has modeled and gotten into a model of business where they just wake up feeling energized and fulfilled. It's going to be impossible for you to beat that person because you're in a system that doesn't align with your internal desires. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot in business and it's that's unfortunate. A, I was going to say that's a very, very good point, Shanae. I think we should be committed to creating wealth, committed to making money, committed to providing for ourselves and our families. Uh, through the vehicle of being in business, but you should you don't necessarily have to commit it to just one business, especially if you evolve as a business person. Um, it's just sometimes necessary to expand. So that's a very good point. Yeah, and that's if you find yourself more, you know, entrepreneurial and 
you could do that. But there's, you know, if you look at the richest people on earth, there's some people that have done it by investing in multiple businesses. And then there's people that have just continues more like Elon style that have made big risks, bet on themselves and really put all into one thing at a time. So there's no right or wrong. It's just like what works best for you. It's the internal self-awareness. For me, I can only focus on one thing at a time and give my all to one thing at a time. And that's just how I'm designed. And knowing that I pour into one thing at a time and knowing even what style of business, there's people that come to me, they're like, I want to launch a group coaching program. And after like 10 minutes of talking to them, we find that every time they've done a group moderation or group this, they hate it (laughs) and it just stresses them out. And so someone like that maybe loves one-on-one or maybe doesn't like interacting with people that much at all and just loves to teach. And maybe they would just do better building digital assets like online courses and eBooks versus actually running programs live like a school. So, and there's no right or wrong. It's just what's right or wrong for you. Because again, if you choose a model that you cannot sustain, and if you choose a model where it feels like an uphill battle every single day, then you will never be able to compete against someone that what they're doing is truly where they thrive and what they love. And they're willing to do it every single day. And they just have that vigor and you'd be surprised that that vigor alone and that excitement and passion alone bleeds through their content their one-on-one prospect calls their one-on-one meetings and makes a difference in every single way versus someone that's just "Eh, it's good enough so uh nafas hi uh can you hear me yep first of all thank you for sharing your experience it's very valuable for thanks (laughs) Um, I'm uh, really uh, in a start of a journey. I'm studying MBA and I'm really into marketing and a data analyst and I want your advice. Uh, How should I start my professional, uh, you know, career? Go for a certificate, an article or go for uh, internship, even unpaid one. So if I were you, I would just find someone that you really admire, like the most successful person in marketing that you can have access to and admire. And I would just try to gain proximity to them and learn from them and just learn how they kind of see the world, the work that they do behind the scenes. And that would be my advice to you. I can't really give you advice on certifications and an MBA because I don't have one, but I'll let Sean Carr answer as well. I think you just being exposed to the right people and seeing how they move in the world and how they've built their businesses could be worth quite a lot. Yeah, so I agree. I think your certifications are certainly of value. And if during your time at university, you also start doing two things. Number one is be very conscious about what connections you build because the connections and relationships you build now potentially are going to bring you great wealth and opportunities in the future. And then number two, something you're already saying is you already think about, well, how does what I learned connect to the real world? And what Shanae has told you, gaining proximity with someone you admire will inevitably lead to you getting your feet wet. Maybe uh, you get an internship. Maybe you partake in some kind of real world project. And then once your studies are concluded, you can say here, um, I'm leaving school. I have my degrees, but I also already have very real world applicable experience. I have sample work that I now can uh, go and take to other opportunities, right? Whether that is another employer or whether you start to uh, launch a self-employed path, but you can point back to something where you have applied your knowledge in a very productive uh, way. And that is, that's great, you know. Certainly, thank you very much. You're welcome. Cleidra, okay, how are you? Great, thank you so much. So. I lost 70 pounds publicly, wrote a book, became a life, life, life coach, started my business. That went well. And then I had more. Congratulations. I mean, wow. Thank you. 
So then I had questions about life and business, and I love life and business together. And just short part, I felt like all the gurus told me I had to do life or business. And I'm like, no, women do life and business all of the time. Mm -hmm. And so my question is the positioning of my belief of foundationally, you have to take great care of yourself to have a great business. And I'm doing well on LinkedIn, but I, I just like your, your advice on more positioning and messaging of how to communicate what I'm, what I'm, what I just shared. What's the first thing that clients need your help with? The first thing is overwhelm. It's usually um, high level executive women. They have a lot of moving parts and they want to do even more. And so they want, they come to me to create space to do that more. Define overwhelm because overwhelm means different things. Like, tell me what they feel. They feel like their husbands are complaining. They don't spend enough time with them. Their family's complaining. They don't spend enough time. They're not missing. They're not hitting the gym. And they feel like they're giving, giving, giving to everyone, but their heart and their life. Personal, their personal yeah. advice. Yeah. So the, the answer to your question is to position yourself for the first thing that you help clients solve. And I'm a big proponent on this. So for example, we do a lot more than LinkedIn. People come to me to build their online businesses, launch their group programs, whatever. I never market any of that because 99% of the time, the first thing they want from me is LinkedIn, right? So mm -hmm. you position yourself to be an expert in the first thing that you have data and evidence of that you help your clients solve. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. So in the first thing, okay. They wonder how I get it all done because so that's the first, that would be the first yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'd advise, you know, cause I've, I've worked with, you know, a lot of my clients are coaches. So sometimes we tend to use their words, right? So I would go back to like your top five clients. If you have the recording, listen to the recording and really audit, like what did they say? Not how you remembered how they said it. Does that make sense? Because the way they say it is very, very important. No, that makes perfect sense. I mean, right now I say I help high achieving women make more money and have a better life, but I think I could dial that in more. And I do record all of my calls so I can go back. Yeah, that, that like if I were working with you, that'd be step one. Okay. Thank and you reach so out if you want more help. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Jonathan. Hi, I was just wondering, what do you do when you first start chatting to someone and the first thing they say is, I'm not looking to buy anything. And you're like, well, I was just saying hi, like I wasn't even trying to sell anything yet. How do you kind of overcome that hurdle in the beginning of a conversation where you're kind of just making a new friend on LinkedIn? I think like people just have their guard up. I would just make a joke about it. But if they're going to be really salty, then just move on. You can only control the activities that you are in control of, like, which is you. You can't control how people respond. So I just focus maybe on like 10 people a day reaching out and just saying hello or whatever. And however they react, they react. And then I'd also like the people that respond well, I'd kind of look at what they may have more in common than the ones that don't. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I'm just not much of a DMer. So it was just came up today and I was like so surprised. So it really helps me <laughs> to start thinking maybe I'm just attracting the wrong person if that's what's happening because I'm just trying to make some friendships. I mean, I just call out simple things. That, and for me, it's really like about timing. So if whoever was on stage today, if I message them I'm like, hey, thanks for being in the room, it may be met with positivity because it's a timing thing. Like it makes sense, right? That's why I prioritize people that register for live events and subscribe to your newsletter because they've kind of opted in. And that newsletter or that live event can serve as a recent trigger versus just someone random that's a connection or that engages with your stuff. For me, it's about timing. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that's amazing. I'm definitely excited about this week's challenge. I know we'll all be there. I hope everyone else comes too, because I know it's the best stuff. So thanks. Very I appreciate that. And for everyone that, you know, loves to learn about AI and stuff, I advise you check out Jonathan. He's been crushing it on LinkedIn. And he's a great example of someone that, you know, if you're in the audience and you're like, eh, I don't want to be the face of my business. You should check out the interview we did recently. It's on, I think, all of our profiles. And you should listen to his transformation because even being a husband, a father of four, and owning a business, he made time for LinkedIn. 
and for the first time ever became the face of his brand and the proof is in the pudding and in the results. So go check it out. God bless you all. Ciao.